Hi, I'm Mike Robine with Eaton Corporation. I'm here today to talk to you about our new hybrid drive system, which you see here, uh, we have on display. Uh, our hybrid drive system, we've got 5,500 units out running total today, and that number is growing exponentially. We've also accumulated over 200 million miles with these systems. And I wanted to talk with you today just a little bit to give you a basic understanding of how this system works. And we're going to start and go from the front to the back. And the first thing that you need to know is it has an electronic actuated clutch, which you see here. And then the actuator is actually mounted down here. Now, what that's for is only connecting the two systems uh, as the, after the vehicle is began to roll. Your actual launch, where you take off in the school bus, is done by an electric motor. So you have no wear on the clutch from takeoff, and then your electric motor is doing all the work. If at any point the load or torque exceeds the capacity of this system, then you're going to go to what's called blended power, where we're going to synchronize this transmission to the engine, and we're going to have all the engine can do and all of the hybrid electric, electric motor can do as well. So then we move back to the most efficient transmission system that's on the market, and that would be our electronic automated transmission, which is, in essence, and it's a manual transmission that's electronically shifted. So you, you don't lose the inefficiencies of a torque converter because there's not a torque converter. You basically have gear-to-gear -gear technology that gives you the efficiency that you're going to need to get the most out of your bus and your uh, fuel mileage that you're going to have in, in your route. The key things that are going to benefit or decide whether this works on a system are? One of the things that, that I also like to talk about is called route analysis. Uh, we have to make sure that the hybrid system that you have, that you're buying, and where you want to place this system is, is in the right spot. In other words, we want to look at average road speeds, and we want to look at how many starts and stops per mile that you do. Now, we want to keep uh, the routes that are in a high start-stop density and a lower average speed. That's going to maximize the fuel economy and the opportunity that you have to realize uh, in excess of 30 to 35 percent increase in fuel economy.